All right, guys, welcome to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate each and every one of you that tunes in to watch us, to listen to our podcast each and every week. You're awesome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for those of you who have left us reviews or smashed the five-star button wherever you're listening to this. You're the reason we get to do this, so thank you very much. Today, we've got an amazing podcast. we got a lot of stuff to get to today, so we got to get right into this thing. Today, we're going to be talking about what do you do if you're working out, you're consistent with those workouts, you love working out, but you know your nutrition stinks. You know it's the thing that's holding you back from getting results. But if you're honest with yourself, you're either overwhelmed with where to start or you just don't want to start fixing your nutrition because you know or you think it's going to be hard. We're going to give you five easy steps to start fixing your nutrition so you can get the benefit of compounding interest with both your training and your nutrition. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. We got a good sponsor for this podcast, though. Can you can you get down there and, and bring the sponsor in, or you want me to? <laughs> you get it. All right. Well. Cool. Why don't you give a little intro while I go get it? I'm trying. What's the official name of this thing? Beats, I mean, beats me. Okay, so my dream piece of equipment has always been to get a stair stepper, and I'm talking about like the big machine that you see in like the gyms, and then like you see like the the pro athletes have, and they're like five thousand dollars. So we happen to be shopping for some stuff for the camper yesterday at Walmart here, where we're staying, and we were looking for a yoga mat kind of situation to like do stuff because a lot of times when we when we're, we're camping there's rocks and so i've been finding that like just like a towel on the ground i'm like not comfortable doing like a floor press or even anything laying on my back because yeah. i'm like oh i'm gonna stab my spine with a rock <laughs> like i was just like the other day i was like no no this is too dangerous so we got like a thick mat that we can put down anyway well my, and, and also my eye glances over yeah can and you i see, see this thing? Heavier than the it stair looks. stepper the 50 dollar version versus the 5000 i mean it's got to be just he's as holding good. it in his hands a portable stair stepper. It's it's great. It's a great little addition to our to our little gym setup, whether we're at home or whether we're in the camper. This thing's legit. I it mean, is. like if you don't want to bring a dumbbell with you or a pair of dumbbells, you could curl this thing. This thing probably weighs a good <laughs> You're not twenty pounds. Curl a stair stepper. It's got a pulley on the back. Yeah. It's got shocks. I think struts. it's gonna be great for days when it's maybe bad weather. Yeah. And we can't get out and get some steps because that drives me crazy or just to get a quick warm-up i did it for 10 minutes yesterday and it counts like right left is one rep so i did 500 right left steps so a thousand total steps and it took about 10 minutes mm -hmm. and it was it was a great like i was breathing heavy i got a little burn in my legs like did I you really get a thousand steps it. during that 10 minutes is that right mm -hmm. i think this thing counted 500 or yeah you that's said what that? i mean like oh my what but uh, yeah i kind of also referenced so like yeah. looked at where i started so it it's accurate on your watch that thing is like i mean that thing is accurate i was watching this like one two <laughs> yeah. is one one two is two be hard for this thing to mess up counting You're just like going it. up and down I, i'm glad we got it yeah but yeah i really have it's always hilarious. wanted like a stair stepper <laughs> because I just feel like that's just going to be a fantastic workout, like the real machines that you're like, yeah. pretending you're climbing up stairs and that. You know, the stair master, the I think they master, call it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, thank you for sponsoring us. The um, I, does it even have a brand on it? I don't know. Beats me weird. You threw away the box, so we're keeping it, was it now. Like <laughs> athletic style. It was like the word athletic with lifestyle combined was, I think, the brand, something like that. Did you already mention the price point? Yeah, fifty dollars. Right. Which I think for something that I feel like it's going to be heavy duty. I feel like won't wear out there's no batteries at first we were like oh i guess actually i'm not sure if it takes batteries it does have a screen um maybe it's nuclear powered no, but one thing i do <laughs> like that it doesn't make any sound like yeah it's not like a treadmill or something that's like got this hum and if someone else is using it in the room you're like all right stop i mean like, just to tell everybody blakely legitimately was like trying to calculate how can we fit our walking pad in our truck to go on these trips so we can be those people standing outside of our camper out in it in nature and rv rv park well, using a walking pad <laughs> how sometimes funny would you're that in be? different situations where you don't have access to actual like walking walking but we have a plug on the outside of the trailer i was like i could be plugging this in and just going to town out here i don't care what people think <laughs> i don't think it would weather very well and we don't have the payload capacity in yeah. the truck because that thing weighs probably like 50 and 60 pounds as much as you bounce around on these roads i had we had a, we had a, a major like of all the things to ever break as we oh, yeah. traveled it was disastrous we pulled into this campsite two days ago and i everything looked fine 
I did notice that like we have this little slide pantry. You push a button and you slide it out, and that's where all like the food is stored. And I noticed like one item from the pantry was out <laughs> in the camper, but the pantry was closed. So at some point, it looks like the pantry opened, something threw, flew out on a bump, and it closed itself. But anyway, I was thinking, oh, that's funny. And then I get a closer look, and my container, which I probably should have not brought, but a glass container that contains my coffee, had bounced up, bounced down, and shattered. Yeah. So you've been, I've been, been very in, carefully it, scooping yeah, out glass some shard coffee, coffee lately. <laughs> but yes, do you have that in a glass <laughs> roast, ma'am? <laughs> Jonathan had a good point. Like as you're roasting coffee, you're not. I mean, but you're using I'm a being, percolator. I'm being very careful and like scooping around. It shattered on the bottom. There was yeah. quite a bit of coffee in there, so I'm still at the top. But you'll um, be fine. You don't know what goes on at Starbucks. It could be way worse than a little bit of glass <laughs> in your coffee. <laughs> I was just like one thing broke, and it was my coffee. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so that's the sponsor. We also thought that we would give a little bit of an update over last week or on last week's <laughs> topic. Uh, one of our clients sent us a message. I'm sure he's listening to this, too. He said, that was the most depressing <laughs> podcast I've ever listened to. So hopefully, I even listened to it back, and I was like, oh. I we're like, that's, okay. good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so at least one person thought it was depressing. But actually, several <laughs> other, pe other people wrote in and yeah. said, I mean, it was relatable because – um, you know, travel is stressful. Not having a plan is stressful. I could tell you Change guys were... Change in itself yeah. is stressful. Uh, so anyway, let's just give a quick update. That's not yeah. this podcast, but right. during that last week when we made that episode, I don't remember where we were when we, we were recorded that. We were in Burnett, but... Texas. Okay. We were in what's called the dip of yeah. any journey <laughs> where you're just kind of frustrated. You feel mm -hmm. lost. You're, you know, you're well, feeling... Well, you, you start on this high... Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then you get in something, you know, then things take a turn and you get down into this point where you're kind of like questioning, what am I doing? Why am I here? Why don't I just re like, like eject, yeah. eject myself from the situation, go back to where it's comfortable, go back home. Yep. Like we were, we were down at the bottom of the dip when we recorded that yeah. podcast. <laughs> it's the same thing with people's like weight loss journey. Yeah. Like you're doing all the things, you're getting results and then you kind of start getting tired. Do I really have to keep doing this? What if I just go back to what I was doing? That's or the Or maybe dip. you get off track and you've, you know, it's been a few weeks or something since you've you know done anything mm -hmm. like that. Those are all like in the dip. You're in the and dip. You kind of you kind of are faced with this situation, and I knew it. I think we talked about it on that podcast. Like, if we turn back and go home, we might never pull this thing back out. We that would you know for like, sale. I need to see this dip through. We both did. Yeah. Even even the dogs they needed to see yeah. the dip through, and we saw the dip through, and. And we're, we're, we're on the other side of the day. We've had a great week We're both week proud to then. say. <laughs> yep. We found a new city that we knew nothing about or didn't know existed mm -hmm. out in West Texas. We had a blast there. We want to already go back. We're, and we've, we love the place that we're at now. We're looking forward to moving that. on. We've, we've actually, uh, our client, Bernie, he wrote in and he gave us some really, really good advice about like, don't try to like recreate your home situation mm -hmm. in like some of the things that he said in your home routine in your too. home routine like some of the things he said really like hit me and i was like okay that's that's really good advice mm -hmm. and we have really you know like thought about like okay what kind of places do we want to be in what like what do we what, what do we value we obviously value like the place we're staying we're staying at a state park we i liked i don't like to be out in the middle of nowhere where there's like 10 campsites around us i can see lots of people right now from the windows but it looks like there's nothing yeah um you have tons of walking trails we can get out in nature we have plenty of room to do our little workouts and we have we're right close to a city so we have great internet you know we're kind of like this these are kind of the things that like kind of make our, our stay comfortable and mm -hmm. like the things that we value and, and like and holding that loosely to know that that yeah. could change over time too like we're yeah. just figuring out we're being comfortable with you know, being out of our routine, figuring out what a new routine can look like. Mm -hmm. And then I think my my client Wayne gave some really good advice, too, that, um, you know, just be OK with not like trying to make a decision during this time, too, yeah. and just take some time when we get back home to reflect and kind of just chill and think mm -hmm. like, all right, what did I enjoy about that? What did I not enjoy about it? Let it marinate a little bit and then we'll decide from there more what we want to do long term so exactly it's been a good week it has all right we're not going to quite make it a month though unless something changes we're going to be like three days short of a month by the time we roll back home jonathan was dead set on a month but it's just like the, there's it's going to start to rain in yeah. the area that we're in and and so i'm not going to go pay to sit in a yeah. uh, in a rv well, we, park we do in, have the, the stair step in the rain <laughs> We could make it happen. All right, so that's that. Let's get into this topic because right. uh, this is a big one. So, uh, you know, when you own the gym, 
everybody was showing up for workouts and before we started offering any nutrition guidance it was a common theme that like i'm killing myself in the gym mm-hmm. but guess what you cannot outdo the other 23 hours of the day with the one hour that you spend in the gym every day you have to start putting some emphasis yeah. on your nutrition if you really want to start to see the changes that there, that you started going to the gym for in the first place yeah we kind of talk about two different things when we say like okay you're going to the gym but you're not you're not seeing results there's there's like maybe like two factors number one you might not be doing some of the things that can get you the visible results and we've we've talked about that all the time your workouts like, stink yeah you might, <laughs> you might be doing the wrong type of workouts and the second factor is you might be doing the workouts you might be doing the right movements but you might You're not, not supporting that with proper recovery proper nutrition. aka nutrition and probably sleep too but that'll yeah. be an episode for another episode <laughs> let's talk about what the symptoms of this situation are okay. number one you're working hard in the gym, but you're not building muscle. Mm-hmm. You're working hard in the gym, you're not getting stronger. You're doing your workouts, but you don't look any different. You're tired all the time. You need stuff like naps. You get extremely hungry during the day. You start a workout, and then like within starting like 30 minutes, you're like, I'm out of energy. That's mm-hmm. your nutrition. Your sleep stinks. People don't realize the impact that nutrition can have on sleep. You have a stomach ache all the time. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, stomach aches aren't normal. (laughs) You should not be having a stomach ache every single day. If it's something that needs to be diagnosed by a doctor, that's one thing. But if you just eat the standard American diet, you're probably going to have a stomach ache on the regular and that's just not normal. So we want to fix all that Mm -hmm. thing. We want to help you step into a better way to treat your nutrition that isn't overwhelming, that doesn't require you to go on a diet and help you get the ball rolling so you can really start to take advantage of what we said earlier, that compounding effect. Put your money into a savings account. Go check it in a year. It's going to be the same as it was. A few cents higher. <laughs> Put your money into a growth stock mutual fund. Go check it in a year. It's going to be up. You're taking advantage of the compounding interest. Mm-hmm. And over time, that's just going to grow and grow and grow. If you can focus on your nutrition, get it dialed in at the same time you bring that intensity and that consistency that you have been putting into your workouts, it's going to start to steamroll on itself and mm-hmm. you're going to see better results. You're going to see the results that you want. So that's the reason that we're doing this. And very similar to like when you start working out, that when you start this mission you're like oh you go to the gym once you're like super sore you're like oh do i want to do this again you you tell yourself you're gonna see it through you you know you get like three weeks and you're like okay i'm in the groove i'm not as sore anymore and then you find that like it's something that you want to do yeah. it's like it's, and it's, it's like not you can tell it's working and it's not even a thing that you really have to like be like force yourself to do anymore it works the same with nutrition amen it feels like oh, i don't want to do these changes i you know and then you and then you start to feel so different that you really want to keep it going yes who was it one of my clients just said this the other day they were just like i feel so good that i don't want to make myself feel bad by going out and eating something just for the taste of it mm-hmm. it's like you're getting it yeah you get what it's all about yeah. right now okay so again we broke this down into five easy to replicate steps they build on themselves mm-hmm. they start with the easiest they build to the more complex but none of this stuff is overwhelming so save this episode, pull out your phone, write this down, send us an email, we'll send you the outline. <laughs> Whatever it takes for you to step into these five things. All right, All right. ready? Yeah. Step one, cut the empty calories to the bone. To the bone. And empty calories are things that you likely might not even miss. Yep. They are hidden calories that you might not even know that you are getting from things like what we like to say, big ass coffees. Fan- fancy <laughs> fancy coffee. ass coffees. I'm like, I forgot the term. Yeah. <laughs> They're usually big too. <laughs> <laughs> these are, like you said, these are calories that you're not going to miss because you're drinking them. Yeah. They're not making you full. They're little random bites throughout the day that aren't even registering in your mind that uh, you ate them. They're not satiating you. It could They're- be mindless, like candy popping that you're doing, like maybe at your desk that you don't even like think about. It could, you know, can be things that can be easily like swapped for something else or eliminated completely that you might not even miss. Yes. So, for example, sodas. Boom. So does a lot. Switch to water big, or diet soda right off the bat. Big calorie bomb right there if you're drinking regular sodas, yes. But that switch to fizzy waters, diet sodas, water with hydrations or flavoring in them, whatever it takes to get those sodas one by one out of your out of your diet will make a huge difference. Coffee. Things you're putting in coffee. I mean, this is sometimes, you know, I think people know by now, but like you can... Look at like the Dunkin' Donuts or the Starbucks menu and see some of these things that can have like five to 900 calories in a drink. And you can just simply like no whip, no syrup, like 
quarter sweet. Like mm -hmm. there's these little tricks that you can do that you're going to get the same experience. You're still at the, you're still at the place, but you're not going to have that huge calorie bomb. Yep. Candy. Candy that's just sitting out and you're yeah. used to grabbing two to three pieces per day. Those little evil little dove chocolates that are <laughs> so delicious that only have 80 or 100 calories per pop. Yeah. They're just sitting out. You're mindlessly eating them. And really when you eat one, all you want to do is eat is another eat one. eat another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, th th so something like gum, something like a yep. no calorie gum or something like that, that can be, that can easily replace just something that if you're like at work, I like have this on my desk and I pop them in to replace it with gum. Even if you have a piece of gum in your mouth and you pass by the, uh, mm -hmm. you don't have to like go eat a piece of gum when you're in the mood to eat a piece of candy. If you're just chewing gum kind of on and off yeah. throughout the day, you're going to be less likely to be like, oh, I want to spit this gum out and go eat a piece yeah. of candy. Here's one that nobody wants to think about, alcohol. These are definitely empty calories. People forget that alcohol by gram, like pure alcohol, has more calories per gram. No, it has, yeah, it has nine, it's been a long time since I talked about how many calories are in alcohol, but it's seven calories per gram of alcohol. So almost as much okay. as, as fat. Now we're not drinking pure alcohol, so it doesn't really yeah. tie into that exactly. But the point is like, these are empty calories mm -hmm. also and they lowers your inhibitions. And after you have one or two drinks in the evening, you're much more likely to go raid the ice cream that's in the fridge or go grab a salty snack and just kind of mindlessly mm -hmm. munch on stuff. So we got to cut down on that kind of stuff. But let's talk about realistic stuff here because we want to make this so that you're like, I can't do, we don't want to make this so you're like, I can't do that. I'm not even going to yeah. start. So let's not, you know, we said cut empty calories down to the bone. We didn't say completely eliminate mm -hmm. empty calories for the rest of your life. So realistically, and this isn't really about weight loss, but this is probably going to be a side effect of weight loss. Mm -hmm. But realistically, a man has to cut between 300 and 500 calories out of their diet per day to start losing a significant amount of weight per day. And a female only has to cut about 200 to 300 calories per day mm -hmm. before they start losing weight. Think about if you did a couple of these things, you would easily remove that many calories from your diet mm -hmm. every day and start losing weight. But in the interest of having some flexibility, let's limit the number of these empty calories we have per day down to about 100 to 200 per day. This does two things. Number one, it gives you a guideline to follow, which mm -hmm. is always helpful. And number two, it pushes away the extreme feelings of restriction that make you feel like, oh man, when I do have access to that food, I'm just going to go in all in and have as much of it yeah. as I can because I know I can never have it again. No, you can have a little bit every single day mm -hmm. if you want. And it's still going to be a decrease from how much you're having uh, which will help create that calorie deficit. Yeah. And you're going to start to crave it less as you cut it out too. Mm -hmm. The reason we get addicted to this stuff is because we get in the habit of yeah. having it. We're not addicted to a candy. We're not addicted to sugar. We're not addicted to whatever. Mm -hmm. We're used to doing it. Yeah. And if we can slowly decrease that, all of a sudden all those feelings of addiction start to go away. And I think a running theme throughout all of these steps is going to be like prioritizing like the things that are like not i don't even know if it's the kind, right it's kind word of like, is like important to the, you the but things like, that that's you are most relevant to what you struggle with well i mean i'm, I'm talking about like choosing choosing the things that like i this is like a non-negotiable for me i really want to be able to have a uh, yeah. drink on friday nights with my significant other blah, blah 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 okay keep that in there we're not saying to eliminate everything that's, yeah. and i think that's going to be a running theme throughout is like think about the things that you're like I like this is this is an important part of my life okay that's fine but uh, like if soda you'd like give her take it or leave it yeah and you can easily replace it with a diet or a fizzy water that's an easy one you know what I mean yeah that's a great point all the stuff that we're going to tell you all has to be within the the constraints of you being ready willing and able to do these things yeah. so if we tell you if something on this list you're like that's a non-negotiable for non-negotiable for me I'm not giving that up yeah well, then that falls under the you're not ready, willing, and able to do that thing. Move on to the Move next Move on thing. to the next thing. Don't think about, okay, the, turn this podcast off. I'm, it's, it's This this is not for me. <laughs> it's like there could be some other things that we talk about that you're, like, willing to take on. Right. That's the point. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Step two, snack smart. All right. So the easy thing we started with was just removing some stuff. We didn't have to, like, do anything extra. Now right. we're going to start to add some stuff in and make some substitutions mm -hmm. for what you might already be doing that's going to start to move the needle. Snacking Everybody smart. already knows what's coming. The <laughs> snack... high protein snack rule. <laughs> yeah. So the, the thing about substituting your snacks for high protein snacks is twofold. 
Number one, it's gonna increase your total daily protein. And after having worked with a lot of people, I can tell you that one of the main reasons they don't see the performance increases they want, the body composition changes that they want, is because they're under eating protein. They're just not eating enough in their meals and they're choosing snacks that don't add up to the to the improvements in body composition mm -hmm. that they wanna to see too. They're snacking on things like chips, crackers, trail mix, nuts, seeds, pretzels, candy, all those kinds of things. We're gonna swap those things out for high protein snacks. What is a high protein snack? Look at the grams of protein in the serving multiply it times 10, and we want that number to be higher than the total calories in the serving. Mm -hmm. So what are some examples of this? Protein shakes, jerky, scan the label, make sure it doesn't have added sugar, it's gonna throw off that ratio. Other brands of meat-based sticks like Chomps or Epic. Ostrom or Epic or whatever, they're all ton out there now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you don't even have to choose, you can go beef, you can go turkey, you can go pork. They all have lean versions. Yeah. This is stuff like lean yogurt. Remember, not all yogurt is created lean equal. Yogurt. There is 5%, 6% whole milk yogurt out there that doesn't fit the high protein snack rule. Mm -hmm. So read the label and use that guideline that I gave you. We'll put a link to it in the notes for this episode. Lean cottage cheese. It's usually 2% or skim mm -hmm. has the best macros to qualify as a high protein snack. Ultra filtered milk like Fairlife or if you live in Texas, Mootopia. This is milk that has had the lactose or the natural sugars in it filtered out, filtered out, a lot of the water filtered out, leaving it with a higher protein concentration, more of the protein solids from the milk in there, and less calories. Hashtag yeah. winning. Skim cheese. This is stuff like, uh, what do they call those? String cheeses. String cheese, yeah. Uh, I used to think those were like, oh man, cheese, you can't really snack on cheese and, and be, you know, making progress. But yeah, some of those are pretty mm -hmm. darn good if you scan the labels on them. It's the same thing as like the yogurt and the cottage cheese. There can be like the, the, the 2%. Yeah, exactly. You know. So I already said that swapping out these snacks is going to increase your protein intake. Mm -hmm. It's also going to reduce your calorie intake, which is going to help you yeah. with the body composition goals that you have. And one of the times that we snack is like usually like a mid you know mid morning or midday or both you know or post workout or whatever yeah, like or after dinner so but most most commonly i feel like this during the day and yeah. i'm thinking about like all of these things that we mentioned are easily like you can bring them with you whether you're going to work whatever whatever you're doing like they make cottage cheese like in the little single servings now they have definitely yogurt with the little fruit on the side and mm -hmm. you know and like even if like maybe the yogurt with the fruit on the side is has a little bit more sugar added or something like that if it's going to make you take it with you eat it regularly as your snack versus like getting a bag of chips out of the vending machine yep. that it, it is worth it it is okay to get those you know um That's like, like the string cheese like you know the jerky these are all things that we can pack with us easily and as you, a snack it's not like all right so let's say you're scanning the aisles and you're like man i can't find any that meet this goal I'm just gonna have a donut instead. Mm -hmm. You're missing the point. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like fitting to the rule, it's about changing your habits. Yeah. Your habits have gotten you the results that you've gotten up until this point. If you're making a concerted effort to choose things that are closer to the things that mm -hmm. we just outlined, you're gonna start getting results. Did you talk about what some of the benefits of having a snack like this are? Like if you say you had like the vending machine and like the Cheez-Its drop down and mm -hmm. that's what you're gonna have for a snack, or you brought an apple and a cottage cheese or yogurt cup yeah. and that was your snack. You're going to feel fuller for so much longer and you're not going to like need that second snack or get sleepy. Yep. If you have if you start regularly eating these type of snacks. You know, people are talking a lot about uh, blood sugar spikes right now mm -hmm. with the popularity of uh, glucose monitors and you know, we'll do another episode on that sometime, but the 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 main thing that the main thing you want to avoid with spiking your blood sugar is that you're just going to have the crash afterwards that's going to make you want to fall asleep at your desk after you get the candy bar out of the vending machine. If you have one of the snacks that we mentioned earlier, it's going to take up more room in your stomach, which is going to satiate you, and it's not necessarily going to spike your blood sugar where you have this crash mm -hmm. later. Protein is going to digest more slowly than anything you're going to get out of a bag at yeah. a vending machine. It's going to have less calories. It's going to have more protein. And all these little things are going to compound over time to help you get better results. So, so number one, we cut out something. 
mm -hmm. empty calories. Number two, all we did was make, make a substitution mm -hmm. to what your default is for snacks. All right. We are on a roll. Let's keep going. Step three, cook your own food. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. We told you it was going to get a little more in depth as we got yeah. on. But remember, you're in this to win this. You're tired mm -hmm. of just going to the gym, running through the motions and, you know, yeah. not getting results. And I think this is probably the one that that we could have one of the biggest after you've cut out like some empty calories that you kind of didn't realize were there this 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 one could be the one that has like the biggest impact yep on your on your just because if we we if we depend on others to make our food we don't have control over what's in them what's in it and if we rely on restaurants for a lot of our meals throughout the week we are just we could be eating the same thing, but a restaurant version and a home version, and it's so many more calories at the restaurant, even if it looks fairly the same and innocent. Right. Yeah, I mean, because you, you can't account for all the oils that are added to yeah. to the stuff cooked at a restaurant. So let's talk specifically about what some of these things are that you might want to start cooking on your own. Mm -hmm. Number one, stop just grabbing pastries for breakfast at the same place that you get your coffee. Make a legitimate breakfast at home make something if you're short on time in the morning make some kind of bulk thing like a frittata mm -hmm. uh, cook a up slice. a bunch of yeah. uh, ground turkey or something make breakfast tacos you know something that you can last a few days on now if you have seven minutes to cook breakfast you can make the digital barbell approved breakfast of eggs and oatmeal you really can mm -hmm. if you do like Blakely and you put the heat on high when you cook <laughs> the eggs cook you can probably get it down to five minutes but if you want them nice and fluffy like <laughs> I make them it's more like seven minutes uh yeah so I mean let's let's just throw some tough love out there you got to get over the excuse that you don't have time because some of this stuff really doesn't take as much time yeah as you think it's going to mm -hmm. it's you know set your alarm seven minutes earlier really I mean can we not do that <laughs> all right secondly stop eating out at lunch just for convenience or for social reasons plus you're going to save a ton of money holy smokes what is it like i would say 15 more, bucks to go out to eat more for con more out of convenience than social like if it's if it's like we said before i feel like there's compromises here if the lunch that you guys have that everybody has on wednesday all the co-workers if that's an important thing in your life, do that. Go okay, to lunch yes. there. On the Wednesday. I'm talking if about Monday, go, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you just grab lunch and you eat by yourself at the pot belly <laughs> because you didn't want to make a sandwich to bring, yeah. that's the thing to cut out. You know what I mean? Right. Like, think about your life and, and what, what things are important for you. If if going out to dinner with your significant other on Friday nights is the important thing, go to dinner. But don't door dash on Thursday just because you don't feel like cooking dinner. Yeah. Don't. I would say as a hard and fast rule, a tough love rule, don't ever pick up food that you bring home. Yeah. Don't ever pick up restaurant food and eat it at your table in front of TV. <laughs> I feel like that is the biggest waste of calories. Just sitting there crying, Save eating your <laughs> restaurant <laughs> meal. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm saying, it's cold already. No, I'm just saying that like by saving those calories for times whenever it matters, when yeah. you have a date when you want to just hang out with somebody when you have a group thing to go to yeah. that's the time to ex like not worry then it, then it's like not a big deal mm -hmm. if you if you're door dashing twice a week if you're going to lunch four times a week and you're picking up food twice a week after work for dinner and you know and you have those occasions those occasions will start to create this stress like oh i have this occasion and what am i going to eat you know this is throwing me off no, it won't throw you off if on the regular you're making your own food and these occasions pop up. Yeah, but my my neighbor's hamster's birthday is a special occasion. Right. <laughs> um, okay, let's keep going on this because we want to give some practical advice how to make this happen. We're I just saying just, don't do this. I think I just this. gave it. You did. Don't eat at restaurants. Yeah, but we just said unless don't, don't, you're going don't. to a restaurant. <laughs> and so don't, don't, don't. Now here's what to actually do. Let's give you a sneak peek into how we help our clients do this and mm -hmm. how we do this on a daily basis. Go to the show notes for this episode if you're on YouTube. Look in the description below. Download our grocery and meal prep guide. This is a step-by-step -step plan for building your healthy grocery list to make these meals. Yeah. And then ideas. I think it's three different ways to take those ingredients and turn them into three different style meals that everybody will like mm -hmm. and that you can actually change the flavor profile of so that you don't get sick of eating the same thing yeah every and, day. and don't think about making your own food as a, a horrible task that is going to be like i have to follow these recipes and it's going to be expensive to buy all these ingredients we're talking about the way we eat is very simple where we get we 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 cook 
proteins, whatever it is, chicken, beef, turkey, ostrich, anything. And we cook enough of it for like up to like three days. Mm. We make potatoes or rice and beans. We pre-chop. This is a, this is a thing we, we have learned fairly recently because mm-hmm. we used to do those things. But then we always eat like bell peppers and cucumbers and an avocado for like the veggies. And like for lunch and dinner in the same day, we would, I would be like chopping the ones we're going to have for lunch. And then I'm like, why don't I just chop enough that we can have them for like lunch, dinner, lunch, dinner. Yeah. So now I'm like chopping up like three to four bell peppers and several cucumbers and putting them in a bowl that can be sealed and in the refrigerator. So now when it's like time for lunch or dinner or whatever, I can grab all these ingredients out, make different meals from it. And it's super easy. Yep. That's the kind that of like, we've tip. never been like the person that has like, created meals from recipes and then like stored them in the freezer and popped them out like nothing like that yeah so it's 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 very simple and it's very like approachable let's talk practically though like should we should we just like go cold turkey on this and just 100 percent eliminate everything even i I think what what the advice i gave earlier was what we should do is like think about your week which time like if you're eating out a lot what times are the important ones like okay every wednesday we go out for the you know, this thing with all the coworkers and on Fridays I go to dinner with my significant other. Those are the two keepers. Yep. You're keeping those two. Sometimes on Mondays I just go by Subway and grab a sandwich. No, you're not doing that anymore. Sometimes on Thursdays I'm running late and I just grab a pizza on the way home and bring it home and eat it. No, you're not doing that anymore. So the, those are the, t- the, think about your life. Think about the things that are important to you, the times that you enjoy and the rest of the times are just for convenience. And the ones that are just for convenience are the ones you're replacing. I like it. All right. You're on fire today, babe. And you're kind of on the other end. (laughs) (laughs) Step four. I'm frozen. Build meals using the hand rule. Okay, so look at your hand. That's going to be your guide for how you build meals. And I think this is actually in the grocery guide too. But, excuse my dry hands, it's super dry here. But the palm of your hand, this part that does not include your fingers, both the size and the thickness is going to be how much protein to put on your plate. I would prefer if you choose a lean protein most time, like chicken breast, lean ground turkey, lean ground beef, because it's going to have less calories and more protein. Men, double that. You're going to double everything that we're talking about here. Now make a fist. This is how many, this is the serving of vegetables that you want to put on your plate. Should take up about half of your plate. Double that for men too. Now make a cupped hand like this, like somebody's going to like put a quarter in your hand. Whatever will fit in the, realistically in this palm, this cupped hand, that's how many starchy carbs. Like if you had to rice on meal. the side or rice, potato, pasta, bread, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Men, double that. Even too. like if you had like corn, like cur- yep. corn, uh, carrots, those are like starchier vegetables. That that's that's the cupped hand. Right, and then portion. Stick your thumb out. I kind of have sh- I kind of have short thumbs now that I look at it. But this is how much <laughs> fat you should get per meal. Men, double that. This one is the tricky one because you can't always see the fat in the yeah, meal. Some sometimes oil. you can, but mm-hmm. it's nuts. It's oils. It's avocado. It's the butter that they poured over your steak at the restaurant. It's the oil that they squirted all over the flat mm-hmm. top at the hibachi place before they cooked the vegetables in it. You're going to have to kind of ask somebody who knows <laughs> if you don't really know what oils and fats are added to yeah. different foods. But this is the one that's the sneakiest because it's most included in foods when you go out to a restaurant. And it's also the most calorically dense mm-hmm. out of protein, carbs, and fat. You're going to easily cut some calories by watching how much so fat you eat. protein fist, your starchy no, pro- carbs. protein palm. Sorry, protein palm. Your starchy carbs are going to be the cupped hand. Your thumb is going to be the fat. And I would just say... With vegetables. The, the vegetables would just kind of fill the rest of your plate. Yeah. So this is helpful when you're making your own meals at home to kind of know how much to take and, and really helpful at restaurants when you're just given a plate to know how much to eat, you know, yeah. based on like what, what it looks like. And then you think about as, as you get used to like building your own plate at home, you, when you go to a restaurant, you would see like, oh, this portion is like really, you know, I'd, swaying one way or the other yeah. here. <laughs> I have... I have very little protein and I have a big pile of like starchy carbs over here. So you just know how much to eat. Like if you go to like Texas Roadhouse and you order like a steak and mashed potatoes, there's going to be five cupped handfuls of mashed potatoes brought to you instead of one or two. So Mm -hmm. you can know like, all right, this is about how much of this portion I should eat instead of just deciding that whatever the restaurant gave you. I was picturing like, for some reason in my mind, I was picturing like a plate of enchiladas. 
and it's just like you have your little three slivers and then the whole plate is like this big bean and rice <laughs> mix and it's just like takes up three quarters of the plate yeah where's and the then vegetable you have the tortillas there? you know it, it, it's very skewed but think anyway. about so think about that's why mexican food can be so challenging rice that's a starchy carb mm -hmm. bean that's a starchy carb with a little bit of protein but in refried beans with all the lard yeah. that's really a combination of carbs and fat all the cheese enchil and the enchiladas, that's a fat. The tortilla, the corn tortilla around the enchilada, that's another carb. Whatever minuscule amount of meat is in the Very enchilada, little, or God yeah. forbid you just got cheese enchiladas, <laughs> there's almost no protein in it. Yeah. And that's a common thing with uh, with Mexican food. It's not that Mexican food is bad. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to make fit the rule, right. the guide <laughs> of what is a healthy meal when it comes to different portions. Yeah. So back to limiting how many times you eat at restaurants, if you limit that down, mm -hmm. those subpar uh, meals with crazy portions yeah. are just a small percentage of your and, overall And I diet. think that's why the theme of like compounding interest is what we're, we're trying to like get at in this, in this ep episode is because the more that you are able to do these things, the more that it doesn't matter when you do the opposite yeah so the more you let's see have cut out the empty calories the more that you you know you choose those high protein snacks as your snacks the more of your own food that you mm -hmm. cook the more that you understand like whenever you take up whenever you take a plate of food that you have the correct portions on there we're not using scales we're not logging we're not doing these things we're just simply using our hand which is right there in front of us yeah. to make these plates the more you do this regularly those times when you go out to restaurant and the portions are skewed or whatever you don't have to think about it it does not Has matter no impact on because you. you've got this compounding interest of all of these other habits that are in place already you're feeling good you're moving well you're living well you like have the energy for the day all the things it's like a blimp on the radar yeah but if the other if it's the opposite then you know it's not a blimp on the radar and <laughs> yeah. you're feeling this you're feeling like sluggish and you're feeling all the effects of not dialing in right. the steps throughout every day, yeah. which is what we don't want. Yep. I think you said blimp on the radar. I think the expression is blip on the radar. A blimp on the radar would be like, I'm oh, there's a, a, poll there's up a blimp. After this podcast, is this the most <laughs> annoying Jonathan's ever been on a podcast? <laughs> I'm, He's gone stir crazy I'm in this camper. P, I'm setting a PR today. <laughs> All right, step five. Go ahead. I'll let you read that one. Quit giving up when you screw up because guess what? You're going to screw up. <laughs> I mean, how many times can we talk about the all or nothing mentality and perfectionist mindset? Yeah. All this stuff doesn't matter if the first time that you fail to live up to one of these goals or anything in your life, you just throw in the towel and you're like, well, I couldn't do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's about like making the best of every single situation that you can and knowing that perfection isn't required. Mm -hmm. Don't go into this, into these steps of changing your nutrition with the expectation that you have to or that you're going to be perfect and if you eliminate that expectation from the get-go the not being perfect is just you know par for the course mm -hmm. it's okay like i didn't do it perfectly i was not supposed to do it perfectly yeah. i can continue and i'll continue to get results so long as i don't just revert back to my old ways that's the that's the main temptation in this stuff is yeah. just like you know when it, when a situation arises where you can't do what you want to do or what you think you should do you bounce all the way back to your default behaviors that have been getting mm -hmm. you the results that you have gotten for so long instead of just making a compromise and making the best decision that you can yeah and like we're not talking about the, making these like like you, you use the word goal and i guess it's not really like these are not like goals you're it, it's more of like steps to implement one by one yeah. dial it in like okay i've cut empty calories i don't really have to think about that anymore you know, okay, like I regularly bring a yogurt and an apple for a lump for my snacks. I don't even have to think about that anymore. Yeah. And it's just like little habit changes that, you know, the idea is to like make habit changes that aren't going to make these huge like negative effects on your life where you're just going to be miserable, but will make positive effects on your health mm -hmm. and your energy. Yeah. It's, 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 go ahead. Uh, go ahead. If you would. No, I mean, I was just, it makes me think of like the challenge mentality. Yeah. Like, you know, like you were. Let's say you set a goal to um, not have alcohol for, for 30 days. And on day 17, you, in a moment of weakness or whatever, you decide to have alcohol. Or it's somebody's alcohol. birthday and you go out and you're like, okay, I want to right. partake in this. So yeah. what, what do you do during that 30-day challenge when you have alcohol on day 17? 
I think most people would say, well, it's over. over I just yeah. go back to drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you just got right back to it, didn't consider it a screw up, mm -hmm. and then out of that 30 days, you only had alcohol once, whereas maybe you were having it every single day yeah. beforehand. Does that make sense how like you can drastically change your results just by not giving up when you mm -hmm. fail to be perfect? 29 out of 30 days, you didn't have <laughs> alcohol instead of 17 or thir whatever, yeah. 13, you know? And making like, that's, I think we've learned that and personally with our challenges that we've give to our clients and stuff like that is like the way that's even the way to make challenge more sustainable. Mm -hmm. Like two years ago, we did a step challenge where it's like, did you, did you get your goal steps today or not yet? Fail or pass? Yeah. And then this year it's like, here's your weekly goal. Yep. Like if you miss two or three days during the week you and you make it up on the weekend when you have more time pass for that week yeah you know just like creating the like that's kind of what you're talking about here in step five is like thinking about like your week instead of your day yeah you know, like okay this day wasn't perfect let's get back on it let's let's try again you know tomorrow let's see how the whole week turns out yeah versus like oh that day's over i'm giving up on this whole thing it's not it's not you know it, sustainable for me it reminds me Sorry, I interrupted you again. That's okay. It, it reminds me of the thing too, where like consistency does not mean consecutive. Yeah. Like you can be consistent without being consecutive every single mm -hmm. day. And the whole point of this is, like we talked about in the beginning, is like I, I thought about as we were driving the other day, like the idea of compounding interest in like your health. And and we were we're watching a lot. Like it's right now, it's during the CrossFit Open, and we're watching a lot of these like YouTube videos of all the different like athletes doing the CrossFit Open and how well they're doing, and and a lot of like people who used to be like in the spotlight CrossFit athletes are, are putting out videos of them doing it. And it made me think about this idea of like these people who they have so much compound interest in their health because they were like these elite level, level athletes, maybe a decade ago. And then they, they still are <laughs> crushing. I mean, like when you, you know, compare their scores to like the common guy out there, they are <laughs> crushing it because they've have this compound interest of their health that they've, dialed in through their fitness and their nutrition mm -hmm. same thing with like these people who are finding like crossfit at like 13 and and you know just i'm just like imagining if they stick with it for so long like the compounding interest that you're going to have and you you just when you have that compound interest just with like just like with your finances it gives you freedom with your health it gives you this freedom like right now we're experiencing that we've both worked out regularly for you know a decade and a half mm -hmm. and we are almost a month in this camper and every day has not been perfect on our fitness. Yeah. But we have this like compound interest where we're feeling good. We have the energy for the whole day. We have a buffer. Like, yeah, we have this buffer. And and that's really what we're talking about is, is like you don't want to be so close to where like one little trip up of inactivity or I'm feeling like whatever, I'm like an, whatever, an illness, whatever, set, like, set you set you really in like in a bad in a bad place place health wise. Yeah, we want that compounding interest so that like basically you can live your life to the fullest with this freedom. Yeah, I don't and, know ju if and that's just making sense. No, that not. all makes sense. I mean, it doesn't really line up with exactly exactly with the the um, topic of this podcast, but I think we can tie well, that it was back where in. It came from. Yeah, that, that that definitely inspired this this mm -hmm. topic. But the point is like. If you really want to see the benefits of the time you're putting in the gym and you know that your nutrition is the thing that's holding you back from getting better results, let's start to dial it in mm -hmm. through the steps that we laid out in this. And you'll be you'll be like encouraged by how much better you feel. You'll be encouraged by the physical changes you see in your body, the strength that you gain, the way that you perform, the mental clarity that you get, and that will motivate you to keep going and set you on this journey to where you want to just keep doing the things that you're doing that are making you feel that way. And that's where you really see the benefit of the compounding come in. Yep. Whoo. We got some editing to do on this podcast to cut out some of my rambling, but. <laughs> oh no, it's day and end. All right. Um, do we have any announcements or anything or are we good to go? I think we're good. All right. If you guys don't already follow us on YouTube, you're not watching this on YouTube. You're just listening. Go to youtube.com slash digital barbell and subscribe. We're putting out more stuff there than we do just on the audio mm -hmm. podcast. So jump over there and subscribe too. I think you'll enjoy what you find. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Shoot us a message. If you have any questions, we'll catch you next time.